What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the CPA Zone, the podcast where we discuss tax strategies and accounting tips for entrepreneurs and real estate investors. My name is Ryan Pulis, and our company, The Pulis Group, offers tax planning and advisory services for entrepreneurs like you. Whether it's bookkeeping, tax planning, or CFO services that you're looking for, we've got you covered. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the CPA Zone. Today, we're going to talk about the home office and how that opens up additional opportunities for deductions for your business. So, One of the many tax benefits to owning a small business is the availability of a home office deduction. So since the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, employees are not allowed to deduct a home office. However, business owners can. The deductions available to homeowners that run a business and renters. So if you're renting and you have a home office, you can still take a home office deduction. You don't have to own your home. Now, first, let's put to rest the myth, myth that a home office is a risky deduction because that's just simply not true. A home office deduction It hasn't been a high-risk item for years. However, you'll still find some tax pros that encourage their clients not to take it because they claim it's high risk. As long as you're entitled to the deduction, you can and you should take it. You just want to make sure you do it correctly. So to claim a home office deduction on your tax return, you have to use part of your home or a separate structure on your property as a primary place of doing business. So generally, there's two basic requirements for your home to qualify as a home office deduction. So one, there must be exclusive use of a portion of your home for carrying out your business in the home on a regular basis. So for example, a taxpayer that uses an extra room to run their business, an extra room in their house to run their business that's set aside just as an office can take the home office deduction for that room as long as it's used regularly and exclusively for business. Now, exclusive, if you have a de minimis amount of personal use, that's not going to negate the deduction, but it really needs to be primarily used for business. For example, I have a home office. We have a separate room. It's my office, my desk, work computer in here, set up for this podcast. There's nothing else that goes on in this room other than work. The second requirement is... It generally must be your principal place of business. So you can meet this requirement if it's your only place of business, that's simple, or if it's your administrative or management office. So the only place you carry out or conduct administrative or management activities for the business. So there's no other location where you perform these particular job duties. Um, And this is actually clarified in the Internal Revenue Code, Section 280 Cap A C states that the term principal place of business includes a place of business used by a taxpayer for the administrative or management activities of a trade or business for that taxpayer if there's no other fixed location where they conduct substantial administrative or management activities. So maybe you're a dentist and you have a location where you see patients, do cleanings, but then you have a home office where you do all the administrative work for your business. That's going to qualify and be considered a principal place of business, the home office would be totally legitimate and allowed in that scenario. Now to calculate the home office deduction, we have two methods. One, the simplified option, which is basic $5 per square foot for the business use area of the home. Now this is limited. The maximum size is 300 square feet. So that means the maximum deduction is $1,500. The second option is the regular method. This has been around much longer. I think the simplified method came in 2012 or 2013 or so, regular method's been around a lot longer. Regular method is based on the percentage of the home devoted to business use. So if a taxpayer uses the whole room or part of a room for conducting their business, they need to figure out the percentage of the home that's being used for business. That's going to be used to determine the deduction for indirect expenses. Now, direct expenses are deducted in full, while indirect expenses are prorated based on the size of the office relative to the size of the home. So for example, let's say you are in a 2,000 square foot home and you have a office that is 200 square feet. Only 10% of your home is gonna be allocated to the home office. So 10% of the expenses are gonna be used to determine, or I should say 10% is gonna, what 
determines the indirect expenses. Now, direct expenses are deducted in full. So the typical expenses you can deduct that would be considered indirect are things like your mortgage interest, real estate taxes, your homeowner's insurance, utilities, repairs and maintenance, depreciation, rent if you're renting. A direct expense would be something specific to that area of your home. So let's say the light goes out in your office and you need to replace the light bulb. That is a direct expense. That is specific to the office, deductible in full. Or if you have, if you have a, a repair that needs to happen in the home office, that is a direct expense deductible in full. Or the home mortgage interest, that's going to be allocated. It's indirect. It's going to be based on that square foot percentage of the office to the whole home. Now, you might be thinking, well, aren't I just robbing my Schedule A deductions by shifting interest or real estate taxes to the business rather than Schedule A? That may be the case, but with the limitations on real estate and your state and local income taxes, the SALT limit of $10,000 in many places, you're well over that. So you're losing the deduction for the real estate taxes anyway. With the new mortgage limitations in place, now you're, a mortgage, you're only allowed to deduct interest on the first $750,000 of debt. So if you're over that limit, the home office is going to free up some additional deduction for you. And if it's shifting the interest away from Schedule A to, say, a Schedule C, it might be a wash on the interest alone, but you still have all the other deductions, the repairs, the maintenance, the depreciation, utilities, insurance, things that weren't deducted anyway are now a, a business deduction for your home office. Beyond the home office deduction itself, one of the best reasons to have a home office is because it opens the door to a larger auto deduction. So generally, commuting miles are considered personal, not deductible. However, when you start and end your day at your home office, anytime you leave the house for something work-related, you're now logging business miles. So that really enhances that auto deduction for you. So to summarize, we, you can deduct home office expenses using the simplified method, $5 per square foot, or the regular method, which is based on the percentage of the home office size relative to the entire house. Eligible expenses, expenses include things like depreciation, rent, utilities, your mortgage interest, real estate taxes, homeowner's insurance, repairs and maintenance, and the home office opens the door for additional business miles and a larger auto deduction. This can actually be more beneficial than the home office deduction itself, depending on your, your own personal circumstances and how much travel you have to do for work when you leave your home office. So that about does it. I hope you found value in this episode. If so, please leave a five-star review and hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, have a great day. So that about does it for this episode of the CPA Zone. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found something valuable that you can take away. We are taking on new clients, and if you'd like to work with us, then go to our website and fill out the client intake form on our contact page. This can be found at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com forward slash contact.